this is Jessica Namasa, and I'm here with Simon Bueller. He is the Senior Director for Health for Linguamatics. Simon, welcome. Thank you very much. Great All to right, be here. so give us the, the short version here. What is Linguamatics? What do you guys do? So we unlock the value in the EHR. There's a lot of information in the unstructured text that we really need to be able to get out to improve patient care. Okay. I'm really fascinated by this whole concept of unstructured data because anytime you talk to any of the AI guys in any of these conferences, um, that's all they talk about is, oh, the unstructured data, and it's like this, you know, I guess black hole yeah. where it's like cool to dig in and find things. Absolutely. So how are you guys doing this and, and what kinds of things are you able to pull out? So we're looking at how you identify high-risk patients. So it's looking at both the population level to say, okay, well, which of these individuals is... Uh, you know, has food uh, insecurity issues or social isolation issues. They're great predictors of outcomes because if you can't get to an appointment or you're not eating properly, your likelihood of having a good outcome is severely reduced. So those are the things that you're looking for to go in predictive models. So give me some really specific examples. So what do you, what, like what kinds of things do you pull out of the unstructured data? Like yeah. are there phrases that you're looking for or what? Yeah, so a really good example of that is to look in radiology reports. Okay. So you're trying to find references to incidental findings like a pulmonary nodule. So that if you're in a road traffic accident, you know, the radiologist is going to look, you've got broken ribs, you're being cared for in the ER, but there's a hint there that says you might have lung cancer. So what we do is automatically pull those out overnight and say, hey, this might be a case of lung cancer, the care coordinator needs to follow up. And one of our health systems last year, there were 37 cases of lung cancer that hadn't been diagnosed. Wow. So they got that early treatment. It really helps their outcomes. That's incredible. I, okay, so I have to ask you this. So this is a very specific patient population you're talking about, and that's yeah. a very specific it thing. It is very specific. Right. So the big question, I guess, here is, especially with these AI companies like yours, how do you scale this up yeah. so that we're able to ga gain some macro benefit from this? Yeah, I mean, we look at the population scale to identify those high-risk factors. So we'll look at, you know, we have a data set of 25 million medical transcripts. That's where we get all our insights from. We mine that data to look at patterns and where things are extracted from. So when you think about scaling up, you've got to tune your algorithms per site, and we have a way to really quickly do that so it doesn't take months to, to implement like a lot of the other systems do. Are we headed in an AI technology like this, like yours and all the other companies we're seeing here, are we headed toward an interoperability issue in a few years where all of these different little companies that do all of these different little um, niche patient groups are, are not going to be able to talk to one another and share their data? Yeah, it's certainly challenging. I think the direction that people are going in with fire and interoperability, I see it a lot of people using the CCDA output format, the yeah. standard with all the EHRs. That helps a lot, but it doesn't give you the semantic interoperability. I see a lot of companies needing to have that, and I see some emergence of people doing that. I think a classic EHR company, more focused on billing. I'd say that's a direction I see the pop health people going in, you know, the health catalysts, those large organizations really taking that challenge up. So I understand you've been doing unstructured data mining, for lack of a better, I guess, term, yes. for, for years. How yep. many years did you say? 15 years. 15 years. So how has the industry changed around you and are I mean we're in healthcare we're so excited about yeah. this this is incredible but it's like are we late to the party or have we seen nothing yet I think the complexity of human health means that there are a lot of specialists the radiologists the pathologists the disease specialists that inherently is best captured in a patient narrative as I've talked to many clinicians they say well we want to get back to telling the story of the patient that's our job all this billing stuff, that's, that's not our job. We right. want to concentrate on the patient and how to treat them most effectively. So I, I think that's why there's such a desire to start using NLP systematically because clinicians have been putting lots of work, more work into clinical documentation and that's raised the profile of the use of NLP. So we've been asking everybody, this is the last question for you, we've been asking everybody about their WTF health moments, okay? And that stands for, what's the future? Yeah. I mean, obviously right now, where we're at today, there's a lot of things that are broken and people can point to any number yeah. of, of things about it. So I guess f from your perspective, what's what's the future? What's the future in health for, for mining unstructured data, for AI, for, yeah. for improving care quality in that way? What's the future? I absolutely see that AI's role is more of an intelligence augmentation. Say it's, more about that. Yeah, so it's not that 
the computer will tell you what to do, it's that it will guide you and make suggestions, it will highlight high risk patients, say okay we should follow up with these guys, we can look at genetic variants and their implications for disease. It's augmenting a human interaction, it's about the patient and the clinician's relationship. You know, healthcare is a human interaction. It's not about machines, so we have to help the people who give the treatment so that they can more, be more effective. Awesome. Well, thank you so much okay, for joining you us, Simon. Thanks so much. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thanks for joining us.